welcome back i tell you what nakuru is driving me crazy or should i say nakuru is bringing me back to life in the essence of the things that i really enjoy doing you know what today we've got three special guests their names shortly i've got here with me one that you've already met an educationalist and of course a fantastic um, Mr. Ibrahim. Right beside him, on the right hand side, we have got Pastor Dishon. Thank you so much, Duncan Buchanan. You become our first guest here in the evening. We greet you all the way from Kenya, and we are going to be bringing a live discussion. Learning and sharing is my passion, and of course, our one and only wonderful. Mr. Clive Lewis. For those who don't know him, I tell you what, he's also an engineer consultant. And today is going to be more about learning and sharing. And um, what we're going to be talking about is really, really interesting because, um, you know, as you know, I never miss any community development discussion. So for those who are joining me here in the evening, I'm capturing and, of course, bringing certain local discussion right from the grassroots yes talk about housing mm -hmm. just there it's coming more people yes i wave at you and your one and only african queen juliet macapilla straight down from friday night friday night i am busy learning and sharing and just before that may i appreciate some of the very most important people who shape up a community and thanks for all those likes i can see your likes noel we are thank you for the likes i can see you and of course daryl model thank you for joining in may i take this opportunity to thank a fantastic dear friend and comrade as well uh, mr clive lewis thank you for bringing us to nakuru many many thanks sorry we got caught up there but at this juncture, can I also appreciate some county assembly members and judges, honorable judges. We appreciate your contribution into the society. And of course, Nyandarwa, honorable Wahome, we thank you for the work that you're doing in Nyandarwa. I've also just met um, a honorable from um, Meru. We thank you for your work that you're doing. We thank you as well, um, honorable from Nakuru. Um, and um, I will get um, my dear friend here to pronounce their name. And uh, <coughs> yes, mm -hmm. yes, we appreciate his work. Thank We've you. just heard that he's uh, put light in all across uh, Nakuru. We are absolutely blessed for that. Yeah, exactly. And he has um, explained his passion about uh, honoring the people of Nakuru. Many, many thank you, um, Honorable. Um, is that um, Joel? Yeah? Yeah, Joel Maina Cairo. Joel Maina Cairo. Joel Maina Cairo. So we appreciate you. We appreciate your presence. We appreciate your government. We appreciate the work that you're doing in this government. And I thank you so much. Just meeting you and just knowing the work and the passion that you've got for people of Nakuru is absolutely... Should I say more? Let's talk about... Um, matters of improving uh, the community and that is why i bring a special program here to you today and so dishon has lived in um, dubai i have lived in united kingdom and of course um clive has lived in uh, rugby <laughs> and in london as well so i tell you what we're looking at different people and uh, of course we've got um ibrahim here who has lived in kenya and we're gonna be just talking um and so bear with me as we just talk naturally and this is just a special weekend it's nothing but just a talk an evening talk in a public place and we are enjoying cousin maxiliano lovely to see you honest lumpimpi lovely to see you as well many many thanks so i was talking to um, dishon earlier on and i was asking him what does he think development is all about and he's very much into um, um he's very much into um tell us first of all what are you into 
Um, tell the viewers what you're all well, about. My background is in facilities management mm -hmm. and uh, or property management. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working with uh, several companies in the UAE. Mm -hmm. I've worked with the Dubai Refreshment Company. Fantastic. I've worked with the Emirates, mm -hmm. one of their branches, which is Costa Coffee, mm -hmm. as a property administration manager, mm -hmm. and uh, some other companies, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, we have uh, Abella mm -hmm. and Company, which is a catering farm, mm -hmm. which I worked for for several years mm -hmm. before leaving, mm -hmm. and joined the Dubai Refreshment Company. Mm -hmm. Now, looking back in those years when we were living I've, I've stayed there in UAE for more than 10 years mm. and, and what is it like living in uh, Dubai? Dubai many people wonder how it is living Dubai, in Dubai Dubai is a, is, is a, is a beautiful cosmopolitan country mm. with several uh, nationalities from different backgrounds actually it's a very nice place to gain experience mm -hmm. in terms of work mm -hmm. and the level of development and advancement in that country is quite high mm -hmm. however the humidity of the locals mm -hmm. in uae mm -hmm. is just amazing mm -hmm. the local nationals are beautifully uh, um, humble mm -hmm. they have a wonderful culture okay and they are very accommodating right if and the anything, weather? The weather, <laughs> it, it can turn any other way. It's yes. A, it out very hot, Yes, I yes. Uh, but uh, the winter seasons have basically started improving. Mm -hmm. Like from October to sometimes up to March. Yes. The weather can be nice. Right. After that, it can be simmering hot. Okay. But all in all, mm -hmm. the lifestyle in Dubai is basically fast-paced. Mm -hmm. Being a 24-hour economy and the demands of, of, of trying to make sure that uh, your work is done with excellence. Mm -hmm. In terms of customer service, mm -hmm. uh, service delivery, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, earning your living mm -hmm. and living a life that you would really anticipate to live in a country like UAE. Yes. And, Looking at the is there many Kenyans living there? Of course. Okay. When what we attracts were, Kenyans to go there? Kenyans, the main thing that attracts Kenyans mm -hmm. basically is, I think it's the money. Okay. Plus the so economic, 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 um, yeah, the economic migration. Level of, 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 uh, of advancement in UAE when it comes to their currency, it's strong of course than ours. Okay. So the attraction is that the way they have developed their economy, mm -hmm. it makes it possible for us to go and work there. Mm -hmm. They recently introduced a 5% tax okay. on all the things that you buy or goods and services. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't really uh, infringe on your income a lot. Right. Because depending on your level of income, mm -hmm. depending on your level of work, mm -hmm. you basically find that you're working in a comfortable environment. Unless Interesting. the work that you've gone to work mm -hmm. or to do is, is, is a... Is is a uh, is low paying. Mm -hmm. It all depends with your ambition mm -hmm. and with your hard work mm -hmm. and with the opportunities that present yourself, depending on education level also. Oh wow! So if 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 you go there and you have good education, mm -hmm. good papers, of course, the opportunities are vast. Right. The number one most important thing for any Kenyan going to UAE is humility. Don't okay. go there and start dreaming of heaven before you even start off from up. Mm. You have to climb the staircase of success mm -hmm. with your hard work. Mm -hmm. Be humble. Don't think that you know much better than anybody else. Yes. There. Because the cultures there mm -hmm. don't really appreciate people who come in with pride. Yes. If you come in with your pride there, mm -hmm. you will go back to your country mm -hmm. so fast or you will fail to succeed in that country mm -hmm. with lots of frustration because you will not go to the next step or the next level of your success. Yes. However, when you work with humility, you are hardworking, you do your best, Yes. you will of course grow and succeed in whatever you do. Yes. Learn. Good night. Good night. Hold on. And of course, 
Hold on, everyone. Here. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Hello, my darling. That's my sister just walking past there. I love her to bits. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> she came in uh, to say goodnight to me uh, here. And um, for those joining me in, we're just talking about, and I'm just hearing from uh, past edition and what's the life like from Dubai and just his own experience. He's talking, uh, he's telling us about the experience in uh, Dubai from his own perspective and so he's lived there for many many years and uh, of course I'm gonna be telling him as well how UK is so we are learning and sharing as well I always encourage you to learn from each other so you're hearing from Pastor Dishon here and of course we thank is our Kingsway was it King's, King's Church. Yes, he's a pastor who has got a lot of admiration for Kingsway Revival Church led by uh, is Pastor that? Dil Kumar. Yes, can you say that again? Pastor Dil Kumar. We appreciate that church and the it's work. Revival Church International. Yes, and the work that they've done for the community here in Kenya. So hearing from him again. So back to what he was saying. He's t telling us about um, humility. And that's a very wonderful thing. Um, just to hear that the people of Dubai like humility, that is amazing. They are very and humble. yes, they are very humble. And this, the, 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 the other thing is mm -hmm. always look out for opportunities. Mm -hmm. The Kenyans who have succeeded in UAE, mm -hmm. they always look out for opportunities. Don't be in a hurry to make it in UAE. Mm -hmm. You will not. You will be frustrated. Mm -hmm. You might end up looking at it from a very wrong perspective. But mm -hmm. if you are patient, mm -hmm. humble, and looking out for opportunities and working hard. Yes. Wherever you start, it doesn't matter. Right. It is not where you start that matters. It right. is where you are going. Right. And you what sort going. of work do Kenyans take when they get there? Well, it depends with what opportunities is there. Mm -hmm. If it is a cleaner's job, mm -hmm. if it's a security man's job, mm -hmm. if it's an office job, it depends all in what opportunities are presented yourself. I mean, to you. Okay. If you get an opportunity to be a receptionist mm -hmm. and you have a degree mm -hmm. in UAE. That is not Kenya, mm -hmm. where you'll have to say, you know, I'm very highly qualified, I can't take this job. Mm -hmm. You don't have the money to mm -hmm. continue existing in that country. So people are flexible, basically. You have to be flexible. Right. Extremely flexible to, right. do, to climb the ladder of success mm -hmm. in the Gulf. Mm -hmm. First. And they encourage people to be oils, flexible. Oils. Is that with their own citizens as well? Yes. Okay. Be flexible. If you're going to be a stranger, though uh, I am um, uh, done business management, I have a degree in business management. If I don't get a, a manager's opportunity, I'm going back to, to my country. Well, you'll come back. Right. But if you get an opportunity as a security guard, mm -hmm. even if you have a degree, you have a degree in your hand, mm -hmm. a business management uh, degree, mm -hmm. be patient. Right. Just take your strides by faith. Mm -hmm. Trust God that things will work out for you right. in that country. And work on your job, learn the cultures, understand the people, understand the opportunities that are there, mm. then move on. Mm -hmm. Because they have durations as per how long you can work mm -hmm. in a particular job depending on your level of education mm -hmm. and depending on the opportunities that are there. Oh wow. So if you start off like a, say a cleaner or a security guard, you'll have to work for like a year or, or two for you to transfer to transfer to another visa. Right. So don't be in a hurry. Because going there, the past six months, maybe you have too many uh, aspirations, you have too many dreams, mm. you have a big family or so many expenses to take care of, you realize mm. that the salary is not working out for you. Mm. It's up to you to adjust to what you have mm -hmm. and move on to what you want. Mm -hmm. That's how it has been over there. Mm. However, I can only say that it has been wonderful staying there, mm -hmm. working there. Mm -hmm. It's a high and you've learnt a lot. Yes. It has exp you have the exposure. The exposure the is brilliant. That it's just extraordinary. And how do you feel when you come to Kenya just to explain to people well, your sort of like uh, this new sort of like experience, I should say? What what I can do, what I can say is that mm. whatever I've learned there. Yes. When I look at the way things are being handled here, yes. I realize we are, of course, doing very well. Well done. Looking at 10 years ago, mm. before I left, and now coming back, mm. the level of development in Kenya mm. is tremendous with the current government. Mm. 
things have really improved. Well done, Kenya. Your government is we being praised. I tell you what, Kenyans are feeling it. I don't Kenyans from diaspora come in and they <coughs> see new transformed Kenya. There you are, President Jubilee. You can hear right from another diaspora. But um, it's just a conversation, a Friday conversation. And again, I come back to the issue of um, transforming Kenya. The reason I do this kind of engagement is to bring people right down to the grassroots. Of course, bringing us to the roots of the issue, to the roots of development, to the roots of understanding where we are doing well and where we are not doing well. Those, so thank you so much to everyone joining me. And just out of interest, in Dubai, when you've been to Dubai, have you heard about Brexit? Or have you taken interest or they don't even understand? What is the issue there? Well, when we're in Dubai... You okay. yourself, have you heard about yes, Brexit issues? I've, I've heard of Brexit. Mm. Uh, well, I might not understand the dynamics of it. Okay. What I know is mm. whatever works well for the people of Britain, Yes. Let them go with it. Okay. If it doesn't work well for them, because you have to look at the long-term effects mm -hmm. of whatever changes you want. Mm -hmm. If you're rushing to get out of the European Union mm -hmm. just because you don't want them, then you are in trouble. But if you're looking at it in terms of protecting your sovereignty or protecting your economy, protecting your interests, mm -hmm. well and good, go for it. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. <laughs> what I can only say is that Kenya, yes. we have grown. Yes. We have made strides mm -hmm. in development that I'm proud of. Okay. And whatever I have gained out of the diaspora mm -hmm. and coming back here, mm -hmm. I came back to invest mm -hmm. into our country. Mm -hmm. And I would urge anybody who is out there who is a Kenyan, mm -hmm. if you're working outside this country, you are doing something for yourself, think about tomorrow because at the end of the day, east to west, home is always the best. Thank you for bringing us back down there. Home is always the best. Yes. What I've seen in Nakuru, it has changed. Yes. Ten years ago, we didn't have lights. We now we've got lights. Light. We didn't have street lights. <laughs> we didn't have proper roads. Yes. <laughs> we have dusty roads. We didn't have proper houses. Now we, we didn't do. Have proper water. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. What the government of Jubilee has done. Mm. I'm not drumming up support for them. Yeah. But I'm just enjoying the fruits of success mm. of this country mm. and of this government. Mm. The medical facilities they have uh, they revamped, they have built, they have uh, refurbished and established in this country. Mm -hmm. They're just tremendous. Thanks to people like myself who um, have brought the voices you, and educated I'm our governors you, and MCAs. I tell, I'm you, I'm tell you what, I'm saying to them, I'm development is paramount. I tell you what, I'm absolutely delighted to hear from that. You know what, um, it's amazing when you just see this, it's humility at its best. <laughs> Um, and um, I'll bring you back to Clive just to tell us about uh, Dubai. How would Dubai be affected with Brexit? Have you thought about that? I don't know that? very much about Dubai. Okay. Um, but I do agree with some of the comments about you have to be... Um, don't think you're better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I tend to find mm -hmm. is you... The people... I'm, I'm pretty good at this. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm, <laughs> I've got a master's degree in business management. <laughs> I take that back on. This is just drink talking. You know what I'm saying? Um, but he's serious. Uh, mm. Yeah. I mean, I find yeah. the people that talk the most yes. and promote themselves the most yes. are the people that know the least. Yes. And I've just got bullshit a mile off. Mm -hmm. So can a lot of our uh, top class engineers. Mm -hmm. And I could also be good at um, identifying who is clever. Yes. And I naturally get on well with them. Yes. I've got a low tolerance for redundancy. Mm -hmm. And a low tolerance for bullshit. I know. And you say it as it is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, tell us more about Brexit issues. Um, have, is it something that um, you think would affect Dubai? I know you said you don't know. Um, you know, tourists like to go to Dubai. Uh, have you thought about that one? I don't think it will affect. Well, mm. would it have a ripple it won't effect? Mm. Tourists going to Dubai. Okay. 
Um, what about the exchange it? rates? Have you thought about there that? Was one? The exchange rate and mm. the fact that the economy is predicted to shrink yeah. between 6% and 9%. That's what I was going to ask you. And so there's going to be less money available for people to spend. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of British people have bought. We need to look into Dubai actually and Brexit have issues, have bought, isn't it? Um, property in Dubai. Mm -hmm. yeah, and Spain. Uh, that's true. There's yeah. plenty of British people who are employed in Europe. Awesome. Yes. Loads of them, Lots. yeah. So, money, pound, and you know. If they are being paid in, oh, that's something else we could think about. If they are being paid in pound form, how does yeah. that impact in Dubai? That's a question to set up, actually. Yeah. Interesting. That's a very interesting thing. Well, they are they usually pay in dirhams. Okay. But of course, I don't know how it was down to. Like uh, British people, some of them come in and do, I think do the they British pay them? The government kind of protects its employees, people yeah. who are employed in, oh. in, in, in the Gulf. Yes. Uh, there is a certain level of uh, income that they have to have brackets that they have to be paid for certain jobs. Mm -hmm. So, whatever, for example, a British person is paid, yeah. it's not going to be the same thing that a Kenyan would be paid for an Asian person. Okay, interesting. Your level of lifestyle in Britain yeah. and the expenses there will not be the same. Okay. That's what we're going through. Right. So, for example, if I'm taking a job that is 1,000 dirhams, mm -hmm. even if we're in the same level of, 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 of employment, mm -hmm. you won't be paid the same salary. It doesn't work the same way. Mm -hmm. So there has to be some way the government actually protects them. Like what we've seen the Filipinos doing, mm -hmm. the Indians doing, mm -hmm. the government, mm -hmm. they're protecting their people. There is a certain level of income which the UAE people mm. or the UAE government or mm -hmm. the Gulf governments mm -hmm. cannot pay their people. Okay. There is a so you've got a minimum wage. Yes, there is a minimum wage I that get they you. have to accept mm -hmm. for the people to take. So it's, it's mm -hmm. not a mm -hmm. Interesting there. So interesting questions. Thank you so much. Meri Kinyanjui, tunakukaribisha sana. And of course, uh, Geoffrey Kamau Maina, karibu. Joseph Maxilano, karibu sana. Tunazungumza tu. Sorry, I've taken into my Swahili and we are welcoming people from Kenya as well because this is a program and of course I love to nurture education and thank you so much to Clive um, for bringing us uh, into the issues of um, Dubai and um, someone is asking a question of um, um, have people thought about um, Arab countries and how that will impact um, uh, uh, how this issue of Brexit uh, will shape up um, Arab countries. So an interesting question they are coming in. So thanks yeah. for that question um, that um, you are asking there. Uh, Usal um, Yan Ola, welcome. Uh, Jenga uh, George, Karibusana. Uh, Jackson Simatai, Karibusana. Thank you so much for watching from London. And of course, my dear, beautiful friend, Gloria Ada Adi. I salute you. I salute you because um, you have come in back for the twice um, here today. So I salute my dear good friend and Jackson Simatai, who also works um, in the public works. We appreciate you. And of course, he's one of the people who has, um, um, he's really talented in uh, doing the roads. A very talented person there, um, Jackson. Yes. I'm in uh, Kenya and I'm listening and discussing issues of Kenya as you can see. We are now going to take you to a dear friend who is going to be telling us about um, community development in Nakuru and what his, um, what, I'll just set a question to him. If he was the governor, supposing he became the governor of Nakuru, what are the real developments that are needed in Nakuru? And I'll take you to Mr. Ibrahim. So just his passion. You know me, I like to feel people. You know what I like. I like to feel people. So he's just a chat. You know, a chat is as good as just saying and building the economy means that you take from different perspectives. You see the vision and understand the people that live in it. He lives in Nakuru. He sees Nakuru every day. He understands the people. He wants to bring us to what has worked very well, perhaps. Maybe just his personal views. And sometimes I will withhold, you know, personal views means just him. 
you know i will challenge him if i think he's just talking a little bit of crap as well you know what i'm like yeah but it, to be just fair on him to say thank you to the work that he's doing he's very much interested in issues of um, improving the economy as well tell us a lot and of course for those who would have watched him he had spoken to us about the new issue of the government taking and shaping up education policies here in Kenya and he likes the issue of NVQs which he was telling us a few days back so if you followed some of his chats he is advocating and seeing the potential of advocating for um, the new system so for those who have not heard from him here he is again I bring him back live to you and back to Ibrahim here today so yes we were speaking and people are following you again so we bring you back here so what's the potential of Nakuru how well are we doing in education in Nakuru by the way as compared to other places in the country uh, thanks so much, Juliet. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, my name is Saeed Ramadan. Mm -hmm. I'm not changing. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, basically, education in a crazy way. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Watching from Gloucester, America, Nyanjui, Nakupongeza Sana. And of course, um, Abi Omoje Hovajire. Thank you so much for watching. She's one of our journalists. She really is good in journalism and she brought me in. Um, she's also brought me into news. So I'll be acknowledging your presence over there. And of course, Benjamin, um, I love you. Say hello to your wife over there. Yes, you were telling us about education. Yes, yeah. Uh, education in Nakuru might be different. Okay. Depending on how the council has been set up. Mm -hmm. The first thing is Nakuru mm -hmm. is a residential place. Mm -hmm. Uh, they will say life is very affordable. Mm -hmm. Number two, the business movement around this is okay. Mm -hmm. The environment is very conducive mm -hmm. for a number of things. Mm -hmm. So basically, mm -hmm. and then because of the status of which Nakuru is coming up mm -hmm. in the city, yes. also that's an added advantage. Mm. Transforming it into a city. Into a city. Mm -hmm. And because you have registered the, the yes. country has registered the leader speaker. Excellent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, already laws about the other we have already a committee mm -hmm. on the municipal councils mm -hmm. helping us to develop Nakuru to the city status. Yes. Uh, that also gives it a better yes. uh, position uh, to be a better place to have more schools. Fantastic. Because we go to Nakuru, you, you combine Nakuru with other counties, Nakuru has more schools than other counties, which means mm -hmm. that the, the environment that which the education will be supported is mm -hmm. very conducive and friendly. Mm -hmm. So, one is that. Uh, Nakuru has a conditional environment mm -hmm. uh, that supports education stronger than other counties. Mm -hmm. Number two is a residential place. Mm -hmm. Most of those uh, parents stay in Nakuru. Mm -hmm. They they work in different counties, but they come back to stay with their families in Nakuru. Mm -hmm. So those are part of the things that have made Nakuru to be better off than other counties. And the, when Muhishmiwa County Joel came here, yes. he said that our county here is the best across the whole country. And uh, he suggested that. Do you agree with him? Yes, absolutely. I agree with him 100%. And I'm going to be biased because it's my county. Of course, <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit biased. Yeah. Well done to Nakuru County. Mm -hmm. We've got a question here coming. Jackson Simatai says, Can you please encourage our leaders to come and see us? For benchmarking, we run London, yet we have no opportunities to shape our urban towns in Kenya. How do you feel about that question? That's that is Jackson nice. um, from Dubai as well. Let's um, go to Dubai, just one minute. What do you think about what Jackson Simetai is saying? Well, I can say that our country mm -hmm. has advanced in shaping up its towns much more better than it was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Nakuru didn't have proper roads mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Nakuru didn't have proper water supplies 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the good schools that we have today mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Whatever was there was in dilapidated state. Mm -hmm. We didn't have opportunities for business people to grow this country. Today, when you walk around Nakuru, you will think you are in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Because the services that are rendered here for the business people the opportunities that have been created by the government to recreate wealth and distribute opportunities for businesses mm -hmm. in this county have really grown tremendously. Mm -hmm. You go to the estates, mm -hmm. you will find the businesses booming. It's mm -hmm. not like before. Mm -hmm. I might not understand the dynamics of how much they're making on each day, mm -hmm. but I can simply tell you that the lifestyle in Nakuru mm -hmm. has grown 
Very some mental slip. Yes, That's his slip. views over there. So yes. coming back to his question again, and I think what he's trying to draw in, mm -hmm. how can we bring diasporas? Because a lot of diaspora, I don't know about Dubai, but say like in London, many people feel left out. So I think that's where he's drawing back his question. Do people in Dubai, apart from yourself, how do they feel? Do they feel, do they have a, a different perspective? Well, you, if you look at London, mm -hmm. how old is London? Okay. It's more than 300 years old, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It started in the Roman times, mm -hmm. so it's 1,700 years old. Right. 1,700 years old. Mm -hmm. How old is Nairobi? Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't blame our forefathers mm -hmm. for whatever they did mm -hmm. or whatever levels of development they brought us to. Mm -hmm. What I can say is that what you have learned out there, mm -hmm. as the people who are in the diaspora, mm -hmm. why don't we share it? Over such forums. <laughs> and, That's and what London, we trust. Right from the start of the day, has mm -hmm. always been a city of immigrants. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't nice always. Mm -hmm. They had to build the city, yeah. they had to bring in laws, rules, regulations, policies that changed mm -hmm. the whole country. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole city mm -hmm. and made it beautiful as it is today. Mm -hmm. All in all, we don't expect the government to change everything for us. Mm -hmm. The government is you and me. Yes. It is not the president, the vice president, and the members of parliament. The government is you and me. Mm -hmm. What ideas do we have? What input are we bringing in? Mm -hmm. So that the government can take it from there and implement it. If they have not implemented it, it's our job to shout it out from these rooftops of YouTube, Facebook. I and I them, tell you what, Jackson, Jackson Simitei, mm -hmm. he says, I agree with the panel. Um, I agree with the panel. My opinion is why do we have to look back and not forward? Why dwell in the past and not the future? Another question. Um, just um, that, that, That's so blank. That's I mean, so it, blank? <laughs> it, it's, it, it's, 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 it's so broad. Mm -hmm. It's so broad because yes. I don't understand what is defined. Okay. But what I can only say is that where we are, mm -hmm. so where we are, yeah. we have grown. What do you, how do 